Hello, everyone. My name is Alex Burnett. I work for LocalWorld Conference and also the Localization Institute, and I'm thrilled to be here today interviewing Dr. Pong Wang. Dr. Wang, how are you today? I'm very good. Hello, Alex. How are you doing? I'm doing well. Thanks for taking time to talk with me today. My what pleasure. we're here to what we're here to discuss today is a new uh, and exciting roundtable that we're organizing for Monday, July 11th in Berlin, Germany, and it's called the MTAI Roundtable. Uh, Dr. Wang, can you talk a little bit about what are some of the goals of this new roundtable and why did you decide to uh, organize this event at this time? Yes, sure. So the goal is very clear, and we organize this roundtable for localizers. And if we look at the uh, past few years, and we can see that in 2016, when uh, neural machine translation started to be commercialized, and in 2017, the attention mechanism and the transformer was applied. And now the question for a lot of localizers is not whether we should use and implement MTAI in our work, but how and what is the best way? So uh, some people have already uh, taken the lead and to uh, started to implement MTAI. They might also have a lot of questions. And so uh, some mistakes maybe uh, that makes them uh, feel that it cost so much that they want to avoid uh, similar uh, problems in the future. And uh, so we feel that this is the perfect timing for us to gather together this group of people so that we can compare notes and we can share our questions and ideas and we can uh, get some answers that we cannot think about these uh, questions and answers on our own. So uh, we feel that uh, uh, this is something that only in-person formatting will be able to offer. And that's the reason why we put together this roundtable in July in Berlin. And I want to mention that Dr. Wang is actually the instructor of the Localization Institute's Machine Translation Masterclass, uh, which has been running for about two years now and has been very successful. But one of the things we constantly heard from our attendees was that they would like it to be even more interactive. And that's kind of the, uh, the thing that drew us to the idea of having a roundtable is because on one hand, you want to learn, but you also want to share experiences with your peers and, and, and you know find out what their pain points were and their challenges that they overcame. I wonder, can you talk, um, so implementing a machine translation solution is obviously a very technical process in nature, but the roundtable is really designed to address more of the strategic aspects of using one of these solutions and how to effectively manage it with your human, with your human team. Can you talk a little bit about how the event might be valuable for localization managers without necessarily requiring them to know the exact details of how the tool works? Yes, this is a good question about the relationship between MTAI technology uh, knowledge and also the expertise and experience of localization. So we would like to say that, like I said, at the very beginning, the roundtable aims for localizers and who do not necessarily relate to be a technical expert because what's more important is the collaboration and whether you can motiv mo uh, mobilize a lot of resources, including technical resources and human resources, and also how do you work with your functional department? So, so uh, we, uh, in the roundtable, we emphasize on strategic uh, decisions and uh, how to use MTAI rather than the technology itself. Having said, having said that, and I would say that we understand there will be some knowledge gap uh, in terms of technology here and there because MTAI is so new. So that's the reason why we co-organized the online sessions before and after the roundtable with the American Machine Translation association. So before uh, the round table, we can help the participant to walk through the agenda, to walk through the uh, topics, and to prepare them to think about their own situations and to bring their questions and to formulate their questions to the round table. And after that, they might have more questions because uh, their uh, ideas have been uh, 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 
add it, and a lot of people will give them a lot of new ideas. So, so after that, we have the post event sessions, and that also uh, targeted at some technical knowledge, so that we can help them to uh, make up some knowledge gap, uh, and that is uh, tailored to their needs. So the the pre event is kind of a primer uh, for the actual discussions at the roundtable, and then the post event will act as a as a summary. You you mentioned that you partnered with uh, with AMTA, the American Machine Translation Association. I know you also are working with an advisory board of experts that have helped you to create the agenda and have helped select the speakers and topics. Would you mind talking a little bit more about the format for the roundtable and uh, and how it will work? We are very very fortunate to have the best uh, the best MT experts and the best MT AI uh, uh, practitioners and industry leaders in our uh, advisory board uh, and also uh, working as the presenters and so uh, the topics and are divided into six modules and three modules in the morning and three modules in the afternoon so the the morning sessions uh, will be focusing on MT implementation uh, use cases. In particular, we have the MT quality evaluation and quality estimation in the morning and in the afternoon, and we have uh, focus uh, on the uh, database. So uh, because what uh, localizers are really uh, good at is working with language data. It's not working with uh, artificial intelligence uh, models because we're not MT AI developers. So we uh, put a lot of uh, time uh, on the data sets and so that we can make best use of our own expertise as localizers. Great. And I know uh, one other, uh, you know, fascinating aspect of the roundtable uh, to me is that um, one of the speakers, Constantine Tranch, will be running a couple of interactive business games and simulations. And I wonder, can you talk about how those are going to bring value and, and, and what are the business games? Of course. So uh, we understand human nature. So six hours, we have six hours roundtable, not including uh, the breaks. Uh, we understand that people need different formats. They need to see different things and new things so that uh, we can best engage their attention. And so that's the reason why we created different formats and interactive business game uh, that is led by Constantine uh, is one of the interesting formats that we're going to offer. So there were two uh, games in the, in the morning. It focused on uh, MT operational aspects. So we have the uh, the general use case discussion and also we also try to uh, design some scenarios that people can think about uh, some uh, more advanced solutions when implementing MTAI and in the afternoon is about a data set so how do you uh, for example customize your MT engine and how do you uh, maintain the data security and so there are a lot of things that we can think about and these games will help uh, the participant to think uh, based on their own scenarios and to ask relevant questions. Well, and that sounds like a really exciting uh, feature of the roundtable, and I can't wait to see it in action. Uh, so we've talked a little bit about the primer and how it will lead in. So obviously, some of the topics that are going to be discussed during the roundtable portion. And before I say that, I want to say, um, so people out there understand the roundtable format consists of some short presentations, but really the majority of the time is going to be spent on discussion. So we might have like a, a 15 minute presentation followed by 60 minutes of open discussion where people are really able to open and share. So what you need to understand is that the post, the pre and post events will be actually instructional and have content, but the actual roundtable itself depends on the interactive participation of all of the roundtable participants. And that's really what drives it and makes it an exciting and, and valuable event too. I wonder, Dr. Wong, can you talk um, lastly, some of the the topics are obviously going to be advanced and inherently technical, but will people who are really new to this MT space still be able to find value and understanding and discussing the strategic nature of these concepts? 
So this is a, a question about a good question about the relationship between technology, uh, knowledge, and also uh, the localization expertise and experience. Again, as I said, the roundtable MT AI roundtable uh, aims to for uh, to serve the localizers who uh, do not necessarily to be a technical expert. And but a lot of uh, when you implement MT, there are a lot of common areas. No matter whether you you started to implement it or you are in the middle of the implementation process. And so uh, in that case, and it works both for people who have or not uh, started to implement MT and, and also for those people who uh, have already implemented and need some advanced solutions. And uh, the best thing is we have a mix of participants, uh, presenters and moderators at the round table, including MT experts, uh, industry leaders and MT practitioners. So uh, I'm pretty sure that you, these participants will be able to benefit from the perspective, from the mix of the other participants in the roundtable. Great. And uh, will the roundtable be uh, applicable for people on both the vendor and the client side? And I, I know we never we don't talk about um, specific tools and such like that, but uh, it would be valuable, correct, for uh, for people on both sides of the industry to, to join? Of course, and if you look at our uh, presenters and look at the moderators and also uh, advisory board members, and you can see that it, it has uh, representatives from uh, both the vendor side, like Eric uh, from the Appen, uh, from the client side, actually, he's mm -hmm. from client side, and also like Olga uh, from uh, the vendor side. And also we have like Alan Lavi from university, actually, he also is a, uh, uh, industry practitioners working in Ambebo and not to mention like Jay and also Constantin, they are MT uh, specialists. And so and Michal from PayPal, also from, uh, from the uh, client side. So again, uh, what I'm proud of is we have this mix of participants, mix of moderators and presenters, and they together, they can bring uh, the best value to our participants. And I think the table is set for just a fantastic event. The fact that we have academia, um, industry, uh, people from client and vendor side, it's really gonna be an all encompassing discussion. And I think there's gonna be some really exciting conversations. So I'd invite everyone, to, uh, if you'd like to learn more about the round table, please visit the Loke World or Loke Institute websites. If you're on the Loke World website, you need to look for the global toolbox sessions. This is kind of what used to be the pre-conference day of Loke World. So it's taking place on Monday, July, 11th. Our registration is open now for the very modest fee of 700 euros. You get access to those online components, the pre and, and post event uh, modules, as well as about six hours, as Pong said, of in-person discussions in Berlin on July 11th. So we really hope to see you there. Dr. Wang, thank you so much for taking time to talk with me today. My pleasure, Alex, and thank you for inviting me. You're welcome, and I'll see you soon in Berlin. See you.